Hey, I, I'm so proud of all of you, and uh, I'm thankful that you're here. Again, we're, we're going through a series, Knowing Him by Name, because the word God is, is, is really just a generic name. And so what we've done over these last several weeks is, is we've just been breaking down His name and getting personal. And, and I just love being able to allow you guys to stand up and, and share, and I want to encourage you. That's one thing that, that really you should look to do every single week. Every single week, you get here a little bit early, you get you a cup of coffee, and just go around and, and look for someone you don't know and introduce yourself. And, and again, it's that simple. Hey, I, I'm Pastor Troy. I just want to share something that blessed me this week. What's your name and what blessed you? And we get to know one another by name, and that's how we develop this, some amazing relationships. And so I'm so thankful that you're here. Again, uh, as, as Jonathan said earlier, I want to challenge you to invite someone to come next Sunday. It's going to be at the fair. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I encourage you to bring your own chair. The bleachers will be set up. Last year, I think the bleachers were full, plus people brought their chairs. But let me tell you, your chair is going to be much more comfortable than their chair. So uh, I just encourage you to bring your own chair. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And here's what it says. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. For it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. <laughs> that is good news. I'm not ashamed of this, this word. I'm not ashamed of this word because it brings forth salvation to those who, who spend time in it. I want to encourage you to spend time in Scripture. Spend time in Scripture. It will change your life. Don't be ashamed of it. Know it. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Share it. It will, it will change your life. I'm not ashamed of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. We should never, ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ should never be ashamed of it because it has the power to change lives. Which is why you and I should share it. I'm not saying we need to share what we think. I'm not share it, saying that we need to, to share how it's changed us. But we should share it. There's power in the word and it stands alone. Verse 17. <coughs> this good news tells us how God made us right in his sight this is accomplished from start to finish by faith as the scripture says it's through faith that a righteous person has life <laughs> i want to encourage you as we open up today's message to never and i mean never be ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ never be ashamed would you bow your heads and let's open in a word of prayer Dear Heavenly Father, I just can't thank you enough for how good you are. Lord, today we get to worship. We get to worship you. And Lord, we know that you're sovereign. We know that you're in control. And Lord, we recognize today that, that this service, is, it belongs to you. And so we want to ask that, that you have the freedom to come in and move the way that you want to move, to speak the way that you want to speak. To, to change and challenge each and every one of us in a way that we need to be changed, in a way that we need to be challenged. Lord, my prayer is for the next several moments that all distractions just be removed and that we're able to hear clearly what your word says because Scripture has the power to change each of us. Scripture has the power to, to bring forth salvation. And so we're just going to, to share scripture today and boldly proclaim your name. Lord, I thank you for every person that's here, every person that's been coming through this series, and, and I pray that they've gotten to know you on a much deeper way. 
In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Amen. Hey, I want you to know that it's so important that you get this, that the gospel of Jesus has the power to change. It's important that you get that. It's important because the reality is, is, is we don't always line up with Scripture. See, we've bought into the lie of the world we bought into this lie that we have to be someone that we're not, that we have to act a way that we don't have to act, that we have to dress and, and, and look. And we've bought into the lie of the world, but the truth is, is, is that's not true. You see, each of us, we have this desire within to be accepted. And we want to be accepted by, by all people. And sometimes we want to be accepted by the wrong people. And as a result, we end up doing the wrong things because of that desire, that need to be accepted. And we have this belief that the only way we're going to be accepted is if we do the things that they're doing. We have this deep desire within not only to be accepted, but but we have this deep desire within to be significant. In other words, we want to be somebody. We want to have a, a lasting impact on someone else's life. We, we all have that desire to be accepted. We have that desire to be significant, to be important, to be that, that person in the room. And I know what some of you are thinking, no, not me. But let's just be honest. We want to be known. We really do, right? How many pictures do we place of ourselves on our social media within a week? I know there's some people in here, and I'm not just being, I'm not just being sarcastic right now. But I am not kidding you. Some people will post three to four pictures a day. Right? That is screaming out that I want to be known. That is screaming out that I want to be accepted. That is screaming out that I want to be significant. Not only do we want to be accepted and and be significant, but, but we really want to be changed because we're not always happy with some of the things, some of the decisions that we've made, some of the places that we've been. And so, so we, we have this desire to change and overcome the obstacles that, that have been in our lives. And many of us, even though we have the desire, we're just not sure how. Which is why the gospel, our Bible, the word of God, why it's, it's so important. The problem is simply this. The problem is is that many of us, instead of feeling accepted or being accepted, we we feel rejected. And we feel rejected not just by by one another, not just by our family, but but many of us feel rejected even by the church. Like we've been church hurt. That person, you know, and and we've all fallen into that. Not only do we we feel rejected by the church, but, but some of us even struggle with the idea because we bought into the lie that we're rejected by God. Which is why the gospel is so important. Because it tells the truth. Not only do we feel rejected, but many of us, we, we, feel, we feel hopeless. Rather than be significant, we, we feel hopeless. Like, what can I do? How, how will I be able to be significant? There's no way God can use me. Do you know what I've done? Do you realize how many times I've screwed up? And so there's, there's no hope there. And that's a big problem. And that's why the gospel is so important, because it, it paints another story. But you've got to know that. Not only do we feel rejected and hopeless, but oftentimes we, we feel powerless. In other words, even if I want to change, I know that I can't. I've tried in the past. I've tried doing things the right way, and it just, it just doesn't work for me. I want to, and I get to see all these amazing other people change, but it's just not me. I can't change. We feel, we feel powerless. And what happens is, is simply this. Rather than walking in victory, we find ourselves walking in defeat. And I think it's important to recognize that that Jesus didn't die on the cross. He didn't give everything so that we could walk around defeated. Right? He didn't give us everything so that we could walk around defeated. He gave us everything so that we could walk in victory. But again, if, 
if you're ashamed of this, right, then you're not going to know that. If you're ashamed of it, you're not going to know that. But, but let's just be honest. Are we in it? Like, are we really spending time in it? You know, we, we get to meet every Sunday for, for a few moments, and, and that's great. We get to read some amazing passages of Scripture, and we get to really connect. But what do we do after that? Right? Like, am I actually spending time in this? Because here's the thing that I know. If we're actually spending time in this, then our lives radically begin to change. You can't stay the same and spend time in this. It just doesn't work that way. There's power in the Word of God. It doesn't return void. We believe in the Word of God. If you're new this morning, uh, we believe from Genesis to Revelation that, that, that everything in there is truth. We believe that it has the power in itself to set you free. So, so what's the solution? What's the solution? Well, I believe the solution is found in Scripture. So Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 and 6, tells us the solution. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and what is right throughout the land. And this will be his name. Yahweh Sidkenu. Yahweh Sidkenu. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. Today's name that I want to introduce to all of you is, is Yahweh Sidkenu. The Lord is our righteousness the Lord is our righteousness the Lord's my righteousness the Lord's your righteousness now some of you are thinking well what is righteousness that's that's like such a churchy word and and I'm new to church and I don't understand these these churchy words you know I've heard my grandma say them but but what what is righteousness and and if I could define it as simple as possible it simply means this right standing with God in other words, it means right living with God. If you go back and you look at the, the Greek word, here's what you're going to find out about righteousness. It's integrity. It's, it's virtue. It's pure. It's holy. It's the correct way of thinking. It's the correct way of living. In other words, it's doing what you're supposed to do. Based on what? God's word. And here's the, the beautiful thing. The Lord is our righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. And here's why that's so important. Because we talk, I talk to so many people, and I've invited so many people to church, and, and, and they just have such a, this, this high standard. They're like, you know what? There's some things I need to get right. There's some things that I need to fix. There's some things that I need to do. And once I'm ready, then I'm going to come to church. I have a family member that I've been working on just nonstop for the last 15 years. And he's so close. And he's been so close for 15 years. And, and every time that I go to say, you know, I'd love to see you come to church, the answer is the same. He says, you know, Man, I want to be there, but there's some things I just gotta I gotta stop doing. You know, I still haven't given up cigarettes. Or, man, I just, you know, I've got this, I, I like to drink a beer every now and then, or or I gotta watch my language. And and I still struggle with that. And the good news is this. I'm not asking you to, to be righteous, I'm asking you to come to church. Right? right? And it's okay if you're smoking or drinking or cursing. And I'm not going to judge that. I just want you to come and experience the grace of God. Because here's what I know. The gospel will change. The gospel will change. The Lord is our righteousness. The Lord is who makes us right. 
So I welcome every single person. <coughs> every single person. We, we want them to come in. We want them to feel like this is a place where they belong. And we say this a lot because and, and, we're very sincere about this. We accept people exactly how they are, but we don't expect them to stay that way. And I believe this. If the church is preaching the good news, if the prayer church is preaching scripture, then they won't stay that way. The two things will happen. One, they'll change because there is power in the word of God. Two, they'll leave because they just can't handle it anymore. But you will not come and sit and not have anything happen. Righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. Yahweh said can do. The Lord is our righteousness. It's not about us. The Lord is our righteousness. We don't get to brag and, 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 and take the glory. The Lord is our righteousness. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. If you're like that, that family member that, that I was talking about, you've been struggling, like coming to church because you don't feel like you're, you're quite good enough or there's some things that you haven't let go, and, and so it's a real struggle for you to come to church. I just want to encourage you to just listen to Scripture. But now God has shown us a way to be made right. God has shown us a way to be made righteous with Him without keeping the requirements of the law. In other words, God has shown us a way of righteousness uh, apart from the law without earning it. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. In other words, this is something that, that, that he's been preparing for a long time. This is something that we can go all the way back into the Old Testament and God was already working. He was already preparing a way for you to be made righteous. We can go all the way back to the very beginning and God began preparing a way for you, for, for me to become righteous. Verse 22, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true. This is true for everyone who believes, no matter who you are. How are we made righteous? By putting our faith in Jesus Christ. It's not about what we do. It's what he did. It's not about who we are, it's, it's about who he is. And when we get that, then, and only then, can we be made righteous. Because verse 23 says, for everyone has sinned. And every one of us falls short of God's glorious standard. Every person in this room has fallen short. And apart from Christ, no one in this room is righteous. No one. I don't care how holy you sound. No one is made righteous apart from Christ. Verse 24, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. I don't know if you know this today, but the penalty of sin is simply this, death. Right? Death. It, it's a separation from God. It's a spiritual separation from Him. And it's a dark place. There are a lot of dead people walking today. Right? And you see that. It's like you, you walk throughout our community and you see people, man, they just look like zombies. Like, this is a zombie of apocalypse. And the reality is, is, is they are spiritually dead. There, there is no life in them. Sin leads to death. 
spiritual, separated, but, but ultimately physically, death. The good news is, is Christ freed us from that penalty. When he jumped on the cross for you and I, when he became that sacrifice so that you and I wouldn't have to, he took our penalty and made us right with God. That's the gospel. It's not about us. We, we didn't do it. He did it. Verse 25, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for our sin. People were made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead. Verse 26, this is a key verse. This is one I want every single person in here to highlight, underline, write your name beside. For he was looking ahead, including them. And right there, circle that word and put your name. For he was looking ahead. This is, this is many, many, many years ago. He was looking ahead. And including them, including Larry. Including Derek, including Stu, including George. He was including Jennifer, right? He was including Pam. He was including Janine. He was looking ahead and he was including us, you and I, and what he would do in this present time. And God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just. And he declares sinners, you and I. He declares you and I. He declares Henry, right? He declares Londa. He declares Julie. He declares that we be made right in his sight when we believe in Jesus Christ. That's the good news. Yahweh Sidkenu. The Lord is our righteousness. It's not about what we do. It's about what he did. So the solution is, is simply this. Hopefully you've already got this, but I'm going to spell it out for you. It's one word. The solution is Jesus. That's the solution. I'm telling you that if you came in here today and you were struggling because you didn't feel accepted, if you were struggling because you didn't feel significant, if you were struggling because you didn't feel like you could change, I want you to know there's good news and his name is Jesus, right? And you were included. You were included in the story long ago. His plan was for you. It's where it gets personal. He did it for you. I want you to know that our righteousness isn't in the things that we do, but our righteousness is in Jesus. Our righteousness is through Jesus. Our righteousness is because of Jesus. It's not about us. Do you get that? I want to share one more verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I'll give you a second to turn over to it. Simply says this For God made Christ his son. His one and only Son who, who never sinned to be an offering for our sins so that we could be made right. So that we could be made righteous with God through Him. Through Him. And I just want to share this. The story doesn't end there. And I know I don't have a whole lot of time here, but, but I, I think it's important to recognize that the story doesn't end there because once we're made right then it's expected that we begin to live right 
right? He doesn't make us righteous and clean us all up so we can go back and get dirty again, right? You know, I have this, this beautiful lab, and, and, and she's white, and she's just, like, she's precious. My kids argue with me all the time. She is precious. But you know what? Don't ever give her a bath because as soon as you do, she's going to go look for the mud. I mean, you can just, you can, you can count on it. If you give her a bath, if you clean her up, she's going outside. She's going to look for mud. She's going to roll in that mud because something about being clean just, I don't know, just drives her nuts. And something about her going in the mud drives me nuts. Because she's an inside dog, like she likes to come inside. And, and you know what, you know, I can always tell when it's raining out because my wife gets up before me and, and I'm in bed and my dog likes to come in and jump on me and she's all wet and muddy. <laughs> and it wakes me up so we have to like wash our sheets like every other day <laughs> because she will not stay out of the mud. And yet we do the same thing. Man, what Jesus did makes us right with God. Why not stay that way? Why are we going back out and rolling in the mud? Why are we walking in defeat when we can and should be walking in victory? Now, some of you are saying, well, well what does it mean to live right? That's where the gospel comes in. You want to know how to live, you've got to start spending time in it, right? And let's not just pick and choose what sins we, we want to follow. We had a great discussion in Sunday school class because one of the things that was talked about in Sunday school class was why does the church always pick on, on homosexuality? And you know, it's true. We're, we're good at picking out certain sins and, and not good at picking out other sins. And, and so I just want to share this. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter what the sin is. You know, I, I truly believe that, that if someone is struggling with, with homosexuality, I hope they hear this loud and clear. God loves them. And he wants them here. Doesn't mean that what they're doing is okay, but what it means is he wants them to come in to the church. He wants them to hear the gospel. Because I believe that even though he accepts us as we are, that if we're in the word, change will begin to take place. And that's just one. You know, it really is. If you're sleeping with the girl that you're dating... <laughs> that's just as bad. That's messed up. That separates you from God. And we could go on and on and on, and, and I'm not here to do that because that's not what I felt like God was, was calling me to preach, but, but here's what he is saying. He made us right so that we could live right. And if you want to know how to live right, then you've got to spend time in Scripture. And if you're saying, well, I just don't get it. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. Well, let me give you a little secret that will just change your life from here on out. Before you even open up the Word of God, spend some time in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit. You know, He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our guide. Ask Him to, to speak to us through His Word and see if you don't begin to change. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you that you never thought was possible. I want to close with this statement. To desire righteousness is to desire Jesus. To desire righteousness is to desire Jesus. Being made right is doing what is right. I want to ask our worship team to come back up. And as they're coming up, we're going to actually close this service out next week or this series out next week and and the last name what we're going to talk about is, is simply this jesus is our salvation come next week at the fair right and you'll get to hear what that name is but but i'm giving you the definition of it right now in advance jesus is our salvation and the good news is this if you know someone who needs jesus next week is a good time to to get them to the service because they're going to hear the gospel. They're going to hear the gospel. Would you bow your heads? I want, to, I want to close in prayer. And then we're going to sing one last song. Father God, I thank you that today we recognize that you are our righteousness. Thank you today that we recognize that we're made right because 
what Jesus did on the cross. And that your word tells us that we were part of that plan. That we're included in the story. And so, Lord, I just, wanna, I just want our church to receive that this morning. Holy Spirit, we're just asking that you, you come in and, and you just begin to, to fill us up before we leave. We're asking that, that we're able to receive this word before we leave. And so as we sing this last song, we just want to honor you. We want to give you praise and we want to give you glory. In Jesus' name.